Hi, this is Bhavish Goswami. I'm the founder and CEO of CloudThat. And we are back with Sangeeta Roy uh, to talk about cloud and chaos. Is there a clear way forward to make it better? Uh, so, uh, Sangeeta, when companies are moved to cloud, right, uh, uh, sometimes it is very hasty, sometimes it's planned, but more and more companies are realizing that when they move to cloud, it becomes a bit chaotic. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, it's not all rosy. There's a lot of hard work also goes into the migration and managing post that. Um, in your experience, what are some of the best practices or how can an organization manage the chaos post migration to cloud? Yeah, so Bhavish, I'll kind of break this into two parts and uh, first bring in all the challenges in this journey and then some of the recommendations that we feel would help businesses to adopt. So let me bring in a few perspectives. Firstly, I'm sure you will agree that when adopting to cloud, businesses have a technical challenge in setting up a cloud program, which also involves revamping their entire architecture while having very minimal disruption to their existing workflows and business processes. Uh, so that is definitely a very important one. And uh, what we have often seen is uh, IT leaders, they treat the cloud programs initially as an IT project Correct. till the consumption cost goes up. Correct. Okay and the or the annual cloud spend goes out of control Absolutely. so what is definitely needed is the business leaders to be mindfully involved in this journey mm -hmm. understand the cloud economics and especially have a granular visibility of cost okay. governance forecasting optimization you know so that they keep their cost uh, cloud mm -hmm. cost under control on the other hand, what we have also seen that companies who've developed FinOps by now are largely focused in managing operational activities. Right. And what kind of operational activities would this be? This would be tagging and contract management and all that. But they are actually supposed to support more strategic programs. In my mind, what I feel is, you know, a robust FinOps team, they require a diverse array of predictive analytic skills okay. to read the future forecast, okay. to estimate cloud economics, to, to kind of give a guidance of change management programs and so on and so forth, okay? And what I would also want to bring across a point to you, Bhavesh, is the organizations who are aware of their cloud unit economics today can derive a break-even point between specific business outcome and the corresponding cloud cost right. to determine whether the investment is worth it or not. So it really calls in for a very strong FinOps skills and bring a gamut of all the tenants that are needed to make this journey successful. I couldn't agree with you more, Sangeeta. Like imagine if we had a company, okay, uh, of let's say 1,000, 2,000 people, right? And the company had a policy that any engineer can go buy lakhs and lakhs of rupees of hardware. You would say that company is crazy, that any, any engineer can go just buy the hardware and the company will pay for it, right? That company won't survive. But so many companies have the same policy on cloud. Agreed. That, that while you will not let the engineer go and buy hardware, Agreed. but you're letting them start the hardware on cloud without any check, any balances, anybody monitoring it, and that is the same as buying hardware because at the end of the month, that is gonna give you a bill. And then, you know, the entire conversation starts, oh, this is really expensive, we didn't anticipate this cost, so I completely agree with you that a solid FinOps team can really help organization. Yeah, and also staying vigilant whether the investment is worth it or not. What is your break-even point? You know, and how do you arrive at a break-even point? You arrive at a break-even point when you know your economics of scale. I think a lot of our viewers probably, you know, will be enlightened because when people think of cloud and they think of cloud spend, they don't think of the ROI so much, right? They are, like you said, they think of an IT project as a cost, but not in the terms of ROI. So, so great insight, Sangeeta. Thank you. So moving on, uh, Sangeeta, what are uh, some of the top actions that you would recommend to organization for a strong cloud foundation? 
Yes, so Cloud Foundation is a design practice, Bhavesh, which I'm sure you would agree, which defines and implements how cloud is used, secured, and operated. Mm -hmm. And Cloud Foundation aims at mitigating risk, accelerating change, and also providing very appropriate isolation levels. Today, what we are also seeing with very large organizations, you know, widely deploying code artifacts. And what does this do? Mm -hmm. Code artifacts like automate the secure, the compliant and standardized configurations and applications. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the three most widely used code artifacts that you would have also heard is policy as a code, mm -hmm. security as a code and compliance as a code. Correct. Okay. So that's how it starts. Now, moving on, what comes next is, again, appropriate CSP services isolation. That is also very critical, you know. Then comes infrastructure along with identity and access management, mm -hmm. followed by network isolation. And then comes the change and control configuration based on the application deployment and the need for performance all of this while mitigating the concentration of risk. And last, what I would say as part of Cloud Foundation, Bhavesh, is CSP agnostic capabilities that are provided to a set of isolation zones. And when I say isolation zones, this could include, you know, networking, uh, routing, businesses, you know, or enterprises, logging, tracking, analytics. It could also mean golden image uh, pipelines. And of course, the most important one is compliance uh, addressal as well. So if we bring in an am amalgamation of all this, it goes back to what I started, that Cloud Foundation is actually meant to address risk mitigation and accelerate a big change. Great point. Um, you also mentioned that uh, some of this is the Cloud Foundation is the cloud service provider agnostic, yeah. right? Um, a lot of cloud service providers also have their own methodologies and their own kind of toolkits for that, right? So if somebody is moving to cloud, how do they kind of combine both of these together? Your core focus should be how are you addressing the risk mitigation? Okay. Your co depends on the organizational ethos of moving to the cloud because it also depends on what workloads are you moving to the cloud. Okay, but we should not lose focus on risk mitigation. We should not lose f focus on security, no matter what we try to do or try to bring in the best of all worlds together. And hence, what we were trying to hint at earlier, Bhavesh, is it should be CSP agnostic capabilities. Absolutely. And Sangeeta, a lot of large organizations today, if you, if you see, they are multi-cloud. Yep. If you look at some of the largest e-commerce sites in India or some of the largest uh, taxi aggregators or uh, largest media companies, I think very few of them are on a single cloud. I think most of them use multiple clouds uh, or they are on hybrid mode. So I think definitely having policies which is agnostic to CSP would definitely probably help them in those cases as well so that the policies are not different when they deploy to different clouds, I think. Yeah, and we can go back to the theme that we started with, Bhavish. It's cloud and chaos, and I'm sure a lot of it will evolve in the journey ahead. Absolutely. So, Sangeeta, uh, moving on, um, a lot of times when companies move to cloud, right, they think of those cloud providers as a hardware-only vendor. In the olden days, I used to get hardware from company XYZ, and now I'm getting my hardware from a, a, a CSP, right? And they don't really think of them as a software partner or a software provider, right? And how can Intel help companies in this environment to realize this potential of the CSPs as also as software partners, right? And have a better cloud foundation for these companies. Yeah, so you touched upon a very pertinent one and something that we as an organization are also building up our focus of going beyond silicon. So we are positioning ourselves as a silicon plus software company. And let me try and address this by telling you that I'm sure we will agree that in today's world, all the top IT infrastructure providers are transforming their digital offerings. It also involves redesigning some of their solutions that they take to market. And what are they doing by virtue of redesigning? 
they it means that they are trying to separate the software from the underlying hardware it runs mm -hmm. number one or to allow software to operate across cloud or hybrid setup mm -hmm. and the last one could be to provide subscription options okay, okay. And as we see more and more organizations moving their workloads to hybrid cloud, what this also means that the developers tend to take the repeatable stack or code, yes. you know, to provision infrastructure that is needed to speed up the development activities. And while this shift helps the developers to work faster, but it also shoots up the cloud cost the security risk mm -hmm. and the you know the work stream inefficiencies why because of a suboptimal choice of infrastructure so to conclude what we would say is again going back to something that i touched in between bhavesh that policies are a critical part of cloud foundation mm -hmm. and this is what you know we believe will help the developers also to uh, acquire a standardized infrastructure automation which they use for infrastructure provisioning to run their applications so what i would uh, just like to summarize saying is one is policy and two is standardizing the infrastructure automation for developers to run the application absolutely and and you are right that i think um, uh, you know uh, if, if if you look at intel as an organization i think it has come a very long way from like you said silicon to silicon plus plus and i think this uh, the software stack that you're talking about will certainly help developers uh, get the best roi out of public clouds or whether that is on premises or on public cloud the roi out of their hardware so so great uh, conversation and i'm sure a lot of developers will probably want to know a little bit more about it so i'll recommend them to uh, research a little bit more and kind of look at what intel is doing in this space very exciting work that you guys have done. Yeah, and Bhavish, what I would love to say since we touched upon Silicon Plus software is, you know, the thoughts that we are planning to bring in is it would be software defined and Silicon enhanced. Mm -hmm. So that's how we will bring a cohesive Silicon Plus software story out to our customers as part of the digital transformation journey. Thank you so much, Sangeeta, for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.